Cassidy, thank you for taking time to come up here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and meet. Are you comfortable if we go ahead and start? Cassidy, you okay if we start? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're over here to the front row, front row right. Cassidy Santin from the Journal and Courier. I know you're going to say it was worth it to delay med school, but uh, sitting here now to play one NCAA tournament game to hopefully get this program going back to the direction where it's here annually, why was it worth it to, to do that? I mean, I, I love Purdue, so I, I don't regret coming back for a second. This is where I wanted to be. Um, this was my goal. Uh, I believed in coach. I believed in my teammates. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it ended quicker than I wanted it to, but I'm just so thankful to be a part of the future of this team and the direction it's heading in. And again, go ahead and raise your hands. We'll get the microphone to you. Ask you what I mean as you really get into it. Like what made it worth it to do that, and what do you see with this program now? What Katie can do, and where this program needs to go. Um, I definitely didn't feel like we were finished last year, and I knew that I wanted to take that extra year, and I wanted to continue on with coach and see what she could do here in another year and obviously we added some new pieces that uh, you know when I made my decision I didn't know that we would have um, but through the summer through the preseason workouts um, you know the early mornings all that stuff it was you could just see how special this team was um, this is the my favorite team that I've been a part of since I've been here um, and, you know, I've been here for five years, so I've got a lot of teammates in my past. Um, but you could just see that, you know, from the start, before we even played any games, that this team was going to be special. And, you know, people probably didn't believe in us at the beginning of the year, but we believed in ourselves. And, and the culture that we built this year um, is unlike any other I've been a part of. And um, it 100% is worth it to um, help Coach Gerald's, you know, build this program back to where it should be. And... Um, to play with these girls one more time and uh, yeah, to wear pretty across my chest. Almost spill this. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Far right back. Brad Brown, WRTV Indianapolis. Coach, this felt like a snapshot of your season with the fight all the way to the end from this group. Kind of tell me how the effort that was there all the way to kind of the final seconds really epitomized what this group had from the start. Yeah, I honestly, like, never doubted that for a second, Brad. Um, you know, it, it didn't go our way for a little bit. Uh, you know, you talk about a team that it's, what, six and a half threes a game, and they make eight um, in the first half. And, you know, it, we didn't do a good enough job of getting out to some shooters. Drake hits three in a row there. Um, I think there was a moment there in the, in the third quarter, I don't know, about three minutes to go, and just all kind of grabbed each other like – and, and I told our group, like, in a timeout, like, we weren't supposed to be here. Like, let's just relax and, and play ball. Like, we're playing with house money out here. And there was nobody in our locker room, outside of our locker room, that thought Purdue was going to make the NCAA tournament. And if you are, you're, you're lying to yourself. If you said you did, you're lying to yourself. Because there's not one single soul, one single person walking this earth that, that believed Purdue was going to be in the NCAA tournament outside of our locker room. And we never, never quit on believing in, in fighting that goal, you know, chasing it down. You know, we, we go on the road to, to Penn State early in, in January and get our butts whooped, like just terrible. And it could have gone one or two ways, but just like you said, just a group of fighters um, that believed in each other and, and, and believed in what we, were t what we were trying to get them to do. Um, and they never quit. Um, and I'll be honest, I wasn't surprised. This is a, a tie game. Uh, I, didn't, I don't care how many we get down. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't surprised in the fourth quarter in the last minute. It was a tie game, um, and we had a chance. And uh, that's all these guys. You know, there's no magic formula. I'm not doing anything special. We didn't change anything. It's just all these guys out there just hooping. Over here, we've gotten a third row left. Hey, uh, Lacey, why did you – you could have gone to a lot of places. What was it about this program, this coach, 
why why did you come here um i think <clears throat> first thing is I wanted to stay Big Ten when I left Rutgers. And then second thing is I played against Purdue. And I like their style of play. And it fit with my style of play. Um, Katie told me that I was going to be able to score. If I could score, go score the ball. And I liked that the first thing. Um, <laughs> and then I also recognized that they had five returning starters. Um, she did a lot with her first year as a head coach. And I liked that she was a second year coach. Um, I thought that they could get back to the tournament, and I wanted to be a part of it. So, over here to the left, uh, Alicia and or Cats could be both. Um, just looking at the defensive energy today, uh, just from the opening play all the way through the fourth, kind of felt the guys were on it. Uh, talk about kind of the team buy-in that has to be in there to be taking charges and racking up the offensive fouls, and then also is that generally where, what you wanted to see out of the defensive unit today? Yeah. Oh, you're asking me either. You don't want to take charges, kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not me. Um, I mean, you know, defensively, we're always going to go out there and, like we already said, we're going to fight. We're going to be tough and, um, you know, we're going to take charges. We're going to, you know, be aggressive. We're going to get the box outs. But, I mean, what I remember is all the things that we didn't do. I mean, just like – certain coverages where, you know, maybe we left a shooter open or we got lost or, um, you know, a rebound didn't fall our way or we missed a box out. Um. No, every, every missed defensive assignment was my fault. These kids battled their butts off. Uh, far right in the back. Sam Gore, the SPN. Cassidy, I, I know you're going to leave tonight with a full heart. But have you thought about what your life's going to look like next, like as you move toward medical school? What are these next few months like uh, for you? And then Katie, after she answers, I just want to know what's next for you and looking at the program for next year. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to go to medical school. I <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, it's like, I, I want to say like, I'm ready to take that next step and, you know, move on and, you know, do what I love, but I wasn't ready today. Uh, it, I, it's going to be really weird. Uh, you know, basketball has consumed my life for, since I was four or five or whenever, you know, you can first start playing and uh, to not you know, go to practice every day or, or you know, have game day shoot around or not be around my teammates every day. Uh, that's going to be really different. It's going to be something I'm going to have to get used to. And, uh, you know, these are some of my best friends, so I'm sure I'm still going to stay in touch and, you know, hang out with them and stuff. It's just, it's, you know, basketball has taken up so much of my time and, you know, I've, worked everything around my school um you know the class I'm taking you know I've figured out how to organize my schedule so that I can manage everything and do it well and now to take such a big chunk of my time out um I don't think I'm gonna know what to do with myself <sighs> right here in the but, front row right oh I'm sorry oh, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I'm gonna follow up real quick um uh, both of these young women up here are going to be super, super successful in life. Um, Cass Harden's going to be putting us one, put, putting one of us to sleep one day before surgery, and there's nobody else I would trust more with a needle before I went under the knife. Um, you know, like who defers med school to come back and play a fifth year, right? And you know, we 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 knew each other kind of growing up, but you know, I always watched Cass from afar, um, being from Indiana. Um, and you talk about a, a young lady that just bleeds black and gold, um, you know, and I don't know, it was the middle of the year, I, I go to her and I'm like, hey, last year, right? And I'm like, dude, you want to come back? Like, you want a fifth year? And she's like, well, I didn't know if you'd want me back. And I'm like, nobody else is taking charges, so. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, just super, super successful in, in life. Um, and like her, like, I'm going to miss coming down to Mackey or Cardinal and not seeing number five. I mean, I can't imagine what that looks like. Um, 
and, and Laisha, like her playing days aren't over. She she's got another opportunity, and 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 we're gonna we're gonna make sure she's taken care of, and she's still hooping. She got a lot of game left in her. Um, but uh, I love my old ladies up here. Front row. Same right. to you from the Journal and Courier. Katie, I have a two-part question. The first one is just, um, did you get an explanation on the offsetting fouls between Leisha and the technical? And then what did you see on the um, the final play? It looked like the ball was knocked away, maybe a travel. I don't want you to... <laughs> Can I get fined? <laughs> um, yeah, the explanation was uh, the on the celebration, she made contact with the kid. Uh, well, Leisha's 5'11". Um, just kind of swung her arm, and the kid behind her was 5'5", five five and just happened to hit her, I guess. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, you know, that, official, that that call the officials, they always go like they're bobbling the ball, you know. Um, but, you know, give Jayla Everett some, some credit because she made a tough, tough shot. And the kid doesn't like to go right. The kid likes to go left, and she makes a floater going right. Um, so give them all the credit there. And then uh, when you said nobody was believing in this team, and you looked at this team. I know you don't want to come to the NCAA tournament and get bounced in the first round. You want to get to March and win in March. Right. But when you do that, I think you're going to look at this group as the one that kind of jump-started this program back to doing that. So what no. was it about this group that you, you know, Fighters. Could be a special group forever? Fighters, believers. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right, Sam. Like, that's exactly what I told them on the court. Like, I don't care if – I mean, I hope we hang banners in, in Mackey. I hope we win Big Ten championships. I hope we win a lot of them. Um, I hope we go to Final Fours um, while I'm leading this program. Um, but this is the group that I'm going to remember forever. Um, you know, like, Laisha, Caitlin are new. Our, our group, you know, they accept them. Obviously, we have Addie and, and Anoa as freshmen. Um, but you look at our, our roster, you look at Cass and Madison and JT, Jayla, Ava, Ricky, um, Abby. I wasn't supposed to be their coach 18 months ago. And from day one, they believed in me. And that's why we're here. They believed in me. They believed in each other um, and, and their fighters. And, and forever, this group, I don't care what happens, this group will always be my favorite Purdue team. Second row, right? Dylan Sin from the Journal Gazette, I guess, Katie, for you. What was it like coaching your first NCAA tournament game and just being in that moment as a, a coach in the sideline? Position? Oh, man, it's just a basketball game. You know, I didn't feel anything different. Um, you know, I, I mean, we're just out there hooping, and I'm on the sideline trying to figure out um, how to help our group. But, no, nah, I just – obviously, you, you dream of, uh, you know, playing in, in March Madness and getting to the NCAA tournament. And now as a coach, same thing. Like, dreams never change. You just get – you want a chance to, to, to play and coach in March. And, just another day at the office. Great. Any other questions? Great. Ladies, thank you so much for being so gracious with your time.